Good evening aspirants, welcome to daily newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankara S Academy. Today's date is 14th October 2024. Displayed here are the list of topics that we are going to discuss today. The first topic is about the Israeli tanks ramming the gate of UN facility in Lebanon. The Israel have attacked the UN facility in Lebanon and this article discusses about the Israel-Lebanon conflict. Let us discuss about the basics of Israel-Lebanon conflict and also about the Israel-Lebanese war in 2006. The second article discusses about the rare diseases and the treatment of rare diseases. The third article discusses about the Nobel Prize in Chemistry, Physics and Medicine for 2024. So these are the three important articles we are going to discuss in this video. Now before we get into the discussion, I have an important announcement. Shankar AS Academy's pre storming prelims series Batch 2 is going on. Interested aspirants can get the link from the description. Now let us get into the discussion. Now look at this article. Israeli tanks have entered a UN facility in Lebanon. The Israeli tanks have damaged the UN gate during military operations. Prime Minister Netanyahu has called for the withdrawal of UN peacekeepers from Hezbollah strongholds in Lebanon. He cited this, UN reported injuries among peacekeepers due to smoke exposure and attacks from Israel forces. So they condemned the incident as violation of international law. In this context, let us discuss about the conflict between Israel and Lebanon and also about Israel and Lebanon war of 2006. Let us get into the discussion. First, let us start with the conflict between Israel and Lebanon. The roots trace back to the establishment of Israel in 1948, which led to the displacement of many Palestinians. So, there are subsequent wars, which particularly in 1967 and 1973, which further complicated the relation between Israel and Lebanon. Now, about Hezbollah, which is founded in 1980s, it emerged in response to the Israeli invasion of Lebanon in 1982. Hezbollah is a Shia military group. It opposes Israel's existence and aims to resist Israeli occupation in Lebanon. The Sheba Forms area, which is claimed by Lebanon, but it is occupied by Israel. This Sheba Forms area remains a contentious point between Israel and Lebanon. Even consider it as a part of Golan Heights. So, this complicates the issue. Now, look at this map. This is Sheba Forms area, which is a point of conflict between Lebanon and Israel. And this is the Golan Heights area which is maintained by Syria, Lebanon and Israel jointly. Even consider this Sheba Forms area as part of Golan Heights but Israel and Lebanon are fighting for this area. Now let us see about the Israel-Lebanese war in 2006. The 2006 Israel-Lebanon war was also known as the Second Lebanon War. The war began when Hezbollah launched a cross-border raid into Israel, killing three Israeli soldiers and abducting two soldiers. In retaliation, the Israel launched extensive airstrikes across Lebanon. So, this targeted Hezbollah infrastructure, military positions and civilian areas. The conflict lasted for 34 days with the significant fighting taking place in southern Lebanon and northern Israel. Approximately 1,200 people in Lebanon were killed, who are mostly civilians while around 160 Israelis died. The war displaced around 1 million Lebanese and 2,50,000 Israelis, leading to widespread destruction in southern Lebanon. United Nations called for a ceasefire, leading to adoption of UN Security Council Resolution 1701. This resolution aimed to end the hostilities and deploy a strengthened UN peacekeeping force in southern Lebanon. The war ended with fragile ceasefire. Hezbollah emerged with increased support in Lebanon while Israel faced criticism for its military strategy and high civilian toll. This Israel-Lebanon war in 2006 influenced regional dynamics affecting Israel-Hezbollah relations. It promoted discussions on security and military engagement in Lebanon. Following this war, UN Interim Force in Lebanon, which is UNIFL, was expanded to monitor the ceasefire and assist in stabilizing the region. The war did not resolve the underlying tensions between Israel and Hezbollah, but it set the stage for future conflicts. So, recently, Israel forces have attacked the UN peacekeeping force, which was stationed in southern Lebanon. So, this is what we have seen in the news article. Now, what about the current status of Lebanon and Israel? Israel views Hezbollah as a significant threat due to its military capabilities and ongoing hostilities. The recent escalations are often triggered by cross-border attacks or threats from Hezbollah. The Israel cites the need to protect its northern border from Hezbollah attacks, especially the Hezbollah's military capabilities and support from Iran. So, the current status is that Hezbollah, which is supported by Iran, is attacking Israel and creating disturbance in the southern Lebanon. And Israel has recently assassinated the head of Hezbollah. And in retaliation, Iran has launched ballistic missiles on Israel. So, this is the current situation in this area. In this context, we must also know a term called Dahiya Doctrine. 
Dahia doctrine means a military strategy created by Israel during Israel Lebanon War 2006. Under this strategy, Israeli forces will attack and destroy the civilian infrastructure so that the civilians will stop supporting the militants like Hezbollah groups. But it causes backfire and civilians turned against the Israeli forces. So this is the Dahia doctrine which was used in Israel Lebanon War in 2006 and still now Israel is following this doctrine to eliminate Hamas in Palestinian region. With this, let us conclude the discussion and let us discuss an MCQ related to this topic. Now look at the question, which of the following rivers flow through both Israel and Syria? The correct answer is option C, Jordan. Jordan river flows through both Israel and Syria. With this, let us conclude the discussion and move to the next news article. Here we are going to discuss about the 2024 Nobel Prizes for Physics, Chemistry and Medicine. Firstly, let us discuss the basics of Nobel Prizes and let us get into the Nobel Prizes for 2024. Alfred Nobel, the inventor of dynamite and a Swedish scientist, founded the Nobel Prizes in 1895. And the Nobel Prize for Physics, Chemistry, Medicine, Literature and Peace were awarded from 1901. And the Nobel Prize for Economics were later added in 1968. Now, talking about the nomination and selection process of Nobel Prizes, over 3000 experts nominate 300 persons who are shortlisted for Nobel Prizes. So, these 300 persons are reviewed by Nobel committees and the decision are made by subject specific organization in Norway and Sweden. Annually, the Nobel Prizes are awarded on December 10, which is Alfred Nobel's death anniversary and the Peace Prize was alone awarded in Oslo and all other prizes are awarded in Stockholm. So, this is about the basics about the Nobel Prizes. Let us discuss this year Nobel Prizes for Physics, Chemistry and Medicine. It is awarded for revolutionizing protein structure prediction and design. The scientists have created an AI platform called AlphaFold which can predict the protein structure and help in real world applications. So here the key term is AlphaFold which is an AI based platform for determining the protein structure and studying the protein structure. Now looking at the Nobel Prize for Medicine or Physiology, it is awarded for the discovery of microRNA. MicroRNA plays a very important role in post-transcriptional gene regulation. It impacts the gene expression and cellular development. So, this year Nobel Prize for Medicine is awarded to the discovery of microRNA. Now, looking at the Nobel Prize for Physics, it is awarded for discovering the artificial neural networks. The artificial intelligence technologies we use today are based on artificial neural networks. It mimics the human brain's neural networks and this year Nobel Prize for Physics was awarded to the discovery of artificial neural networks. So, this is about the three Nobel Prizes. Now, let us discuss an MCQ related to this topic. Who won the 2024 Nobel Prize in Physics? The correct answer is option C. With this, let us conclude the discussion and move to the next news article. Now, look at this article. It talks about the issues in the treatment of rare diseases. In India, a disease is classified as a rare disease if it affects less than 1 in 2500 people. The global definitions may vary. For example, in US, a disease is called as a rare disease. For example, in US, a disease is called as a rare disease if it affects fewer than 2 lakh people. So, in this discussion, let us see the basics about the rare disease and the government initiatives regarding rare diseases. The Indian Organization for Rare Disease, which is IORD, is a non governmental organization. It is dedicated for raising awareness and advocating for the treatment of rare diseases. It also involves in the research for rare diseases in India. This IORD serves as a platform to bring together the patients, medical professionals and pharmaceutical companies to address the challenges regarding rare diseases in India. Knowing about this organization is very important because it may reflect in prelims exam. The important objective of this IORD is to raise awareness about rare disease in India it also advocates for public policy making regarding rare diseases. It also encourages pharmaceutical and biotech companies to develop the orphan drugs in rare diseases. Orphan drugs are the drugs related to the rare diseases. Now, let us discuss about the National Rare Disease Policy of 2021. The national policy for the treatment of rare diseases was first introduced in 2017, but it faced implementation challenges, especially regarding the cost sharing between central and state government for treating the rare diseases. A national registry for rare diseases is maintained by ICMR, that is Indian Council for Medical Research. So, this national registry for rare diseases will track the prevalence of rare diseases and aid in the future policy making. Now, the national policy for rare diseases categorizes the rare diseases into three groups. The first group is about the disease requiring one-time treatment, for example, the stem cell transplantation or organ transplantation. So, this is the group 1 rare disease. Now, the group 2 rare disease is about needing long-term and low-cost treatment. 
for example special diets and hormone therapies. They are comparatively at lower cost but requires long term treatment. Then there is a group 3 disease which requires lifelong treatment with a very high cost. They are mostly terminal illness. So these are the three group of rare diseases classified under national policy for rare diseases. Now talking about the prevention and control of rare disease. The prevention of rare disease involves three types of prevention. The first is primary prevention which focus on awareness and genetic counseling to prevent the birth of children with rare disease. The secondary prevention involves the screening of newborn babies and early diagnosis to minimize the impact of rare diseases. The tertiary prevention includes supportive care for improving the quality of life for the patients. So these are the three kinds of prevention techniques for rare diseases. The central government has established center of excellence in premier government hospitals for the treatment of rare disease and its diagnosis. The Nidan Kendras are genetic testing centers which provide diagnosis and counseling for rare diseases. It offers financial support of up to 5 crore which will be provided for the infrastructure development at these Nidan Kendras. Now let us see about the government support for the treatment of rare disease. The financial aid of up to 20 lakh will be provided for the group 1 diseases which require one time treatment under Rashtriya Aroginidhi. The state governments may support the group 2 patients who needed lifelong but low cost treatment. For group 3 diseases, there will be crowdfunding under digital platform through corporate and individual donors. So the support for the rare disease for group 1 disease there will be a funding of up to 20 lakh under Rashtriya Aroginidhi. For group 2 disease the support will be provided by state governments and for group 3 disease there will be crowdfunding under digital platform. So this is about the support for rare diseases under 3 groups. Now let us discuss an MCQ related to this topic. With reference to the rare diseases in India consider the following statements. The national policy for rare disease 2017 was influenced by Indian organization for rare diseases as this statement is correct. Now look at the second statement, the national policy for rare disease 2017 focus on the development of orphan drugs and provides financial assistance to patients as this statement is also correct. We have seen this in discussion. The national policy for rare diseases classifies the rare disease into three categories based on the availability of treatment and the severity of disease. As we have seen in this discussion, the national policy for rare disease classifies the rare disease into three groups, group 1, group 2, group 3. So all the three statements given here are correct. The correct answer is option D. With this let us conclude the discussion. Now we have come to the end of the discussion. If you like the video please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to Shankaraya's Academy YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.